This is One on One. We're pleased to welcome Judy Spires, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Kings and Balducci. It's good to see you. Wonderful to see you and be here with you today. We were just talking before we got in here. Uh, you are the daughter of? A truck driver from a supermarket, yes, who wow. got me my first job when I was in high school because he knew the manager. Right. And uh, it was really to get money to uh, put towards my college education. And that was the purpose. However, once I got in the business, I absolutely fell in love with retail. And so I've been in the business since I've been in high school. You, you've loved this business because? I love people. And where do you find so many people to work with and so many customers to take care of? Mm. It is uh, just a perfect opportunity for me. And I was so fortunate to find that passion at such mm. a young age. It's interesting. Um, I happen to tell you that, to disclose, we like, there's a Kings in our community in Montclair that we happen to like an awful lot. Describe Kings. Thank you. Our pleasure. Describe the Kings history, 19... Uh... So it was started by the Bilner family yes. in 1936. So we are celebrating our 81st year wow. as a new New Jersey company. And, you know, started on spectacular product and spectacular service. And those are the two things that we hold through to today that differentiates us and keeps us successful and 81 years young. You know, this, this program focuses on women who happen to be extremely successful in their careers. What would you say the number one key to success that you've had as a leader, as an entrepreneur, as a CEO has been? Well, I first mentioned that when you find your passion, and I found my passion at such an early age, it's not like working. And I know people kid about it, and they say when you find your passion, you'll never work is a day true? in your life. It is absolutely true, absolutely true. And you know, when I first went into the business, what I loved about it was the positive reinforcement of retail. You know, you you know how sales are hour to hour. You know how you can take care of customers. You know how customers are reacting. You know how the your associates in the store feel. And when you get that kind of positive reinforcement, mm. it really worked for me. Who was your mentor? I was lucky enough to work for a store manager who was in love with the business and he had the highest standards and you know the store had to be perfectly clean the customer couldn't wait in line we couldn't be out of a product and his passion made me feel that that business wouldn't run without me he made me feel so important to the business this you is a it. this is a riot i mean the day i got married it's not true what i heard is it i worked a half a day i see i saw that i thought it was a mis i thought it was a mistake it's so funny right because i just felt he made me feel that if I didn't go to work that day, that company was not going to run. And how great was that to get that feeling? And I, I so, always tried to replicate that. So I'm curious about this. With your hand standards being as high as they are, I'm not going to call you a perfectionist. I don't know you well enough to know that. Oh, I just, you could do that. Just okay, ask my it. husband. He'll chime in. Okay. <laughs> ask my wife and you'll have the same conversation, which is not so easy for the other person to say this. What's it like for those around you knowing that your standards are like this, really high? Well, I, uh, I guess sometimes it, it puts a lot of pressure on people, but I have great people, and I've always worked with great people. Something else we have in common. And when you have that, right, it, it, it's, you know, and you set the standards, and you have people that, I, I mean, I have great people, and I really believe another thing that I found out in my career is that you surround yourself with people that are better than you are at doing what they do. And those people have those kind of high standards and it really leads to success. You know, the whole question of women entrepreneurship, women leadership, biggest difference, if at all, that you believe there is between being a woman who happens to be a leader and a man is? You know, that's a very difficult question. Do you think there's a difference? I I struggle with that because I've, I've worked with lots of different kind of leaders. And it was really interesting, uh, you know, when I became a manager uh, of a store, so I worked my way through the, and the first position in management is to be a store manager. You didn't wake up CEO. No, there's a lot of steps. There's a lot of fun steps, a lot of hard work steps. But I remember I was in a room with the store managers. We were learning. We were in for a special program that day when I was first a manager. And I walked outside the room, and, it, and an executive said to me, how does it feel? And I said, how does what feel? And he said, to be the only one. And I said, the only one what? And he said, the only woman in the room. Wow. 
And to tell you the truth, Steve, I never thought of myself as that. I thought of myself as a manager. I was driven to be a manager. I was driven to uh, excel for the customers and the associates. So that's how I thought of myself. And I never, well, I'm a woman in this room and I have to think differently or I have to be mm. differently. Uh, so that's not how I came up through my career. I do believe in supporting the advancement of people in their careers. And I've been very actively involved in the state of New Jersey sure. in supporting women because I hate to hear um, negative things said that you know, you know about uh, women's leadership style and and how you know for years people would say well it, it's harder to work for a few woman. seconds left go ahead. Um, not, not, not so, right? We got to support each other. We got to pat each other on the back and we got to get out there and champion each other. You just helped a lot of people just in this interview. And Judy, I thank you so much. And uh, you have a great operation. Thank you. Thank you. That was wonderful. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Georgian Court University, NJM Insurance Group, MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey, Community Food Bank of New Jersey, the Russell Berry Foundation, the Northward Center, and by Adler Aphasia Center. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.